Hello and welcome to Integrate PhotoKit in iOS. My name is Edward Isha and I'm going to walk you through uh, the tutorial and uh, the framework of PhotoKit. So, why use PhotoKit? Um, PhotoKit can give you a lot of uh, benefits like fetching assets, photos, videos, photo live, panoramas and all that. And it can give you um, change observing, which is um, a notification whenever the data set has changed, when the user deletes photos, add new photos to the library, and so forth. And it also allows you to save your changes back to the photo library. Um, plus, it gives you a lot of like benefits like caching and thumbnails. So, you know, the benefits are pretty obvious. So let's get started and see how we're going to work it out. So the goal of this demo is to get the user permission because you have to get the permission from the user to access their private photos and then fetch the photos and pick one of them. So uh, the, the basic logic is um, in, in, in the data is first we request a permission and then we construct a ph fetch result which is a query that goes to the photo assets uh, library to the photos library. And then it gives me back um, a list of assets and I can pick one of those assets. So let's dig into the demo. Okay, let's run the app and see how it works. All right, so we got the user view controller, which has a placeholder image. We have a prompt to change the profile photo. Um, so the first thing we're going to see is the permission screen. So I'm going to ask for permission click OK to allow and then we go ahead and fetch the photos so these are the standard photos in the iOS uh, simulator we're going to pick one and go back and it should be there so we picked the asset got an image out of it and now you can upload it to the server do whatever you need with it so let's look into the code so the user profile view controller has a um, very simple setup so we launch a segue and once the segue is launched we're going to assign um, our callback to get the asset back. So we're going to set our callback into the view models callback. And this callback basically handles an asset. Um, we'll get back to this one. So the photo picker view controller um, basically has, there's a, there's a collection view controller, which has the number of sections and collection number of items, uh, standard stuff for collection view. Um, and then we have the cell, um, which we're going to assign an asset to. And then we're going to capture that selection so we can pass that asset back. So we're going to save that selection in the view model. Um, so you can see view model selected asset is the asset for that index. So let's go um, to see how we load the images and get the permissions. So first thing, when the view controller loads, we're going to say load images and then we're going to get a fetch result. We'll see what that means. And then we're going to reload the collection view. So let's start from the top. So on the permission side, so once we, want, we get a permission, we can do something with that. So first, we need to get the permission. So we call request authorization on the photo library. And that gives, gives us an auth status. So the auth status um, could be, at that point, uh, any of those four values. So it's either not determined, which means we haven't asked yet, or restricted in case of like parental guidance, denied or authorized. So we pass that value back to our closure, which has the authorization status. So when we load the images, we ask for the request, we ask for the uh, access to the photos, and we get an authorization status, which is uh, what we pass from here. And if it is authorized, then we're just going to construct a fetch result. So ph fetch result, um, we're, we're going to tell we're going to tell it to bring us results of type ph asset. You could bring collections, you can bring smart collections. There's a lot of other types you can bring in. We're focusing on photos, so it's an asset and it's of type image. So it basically gives me all the images in the library, and then I'm going to cache that and save that uh, fetch result in my image result and call my callback with this fetch result. Um, let's look at the, at the callback. So when we call load image assets, 
um, from the v from the view controller, we say load image assets and we get that fetch result. We're just going to reload the collection view at that point. So the collection view is going to ask us how many items, and then we can we can give those answers based on the fetch result. So if we have a fetch result, we can just return the count on it. Um, that's the mapping over over an option. Also, we get the uh, unwrapped fetch result, and we just return the count. Otherwise, it's null, so it's zero. Um, and the same thing for asset for index, and we wanna we wanna fetch the asset at index for each row of the collection for each cell in the collection view. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna unwrap the the fetch result, and then we're gonna return object at index, which is gonna be an asset um, at this point. Okay, so that's that's basically for the collection uh, data source. Um, the next thing is uh, let's see what happens on the selection and how we get the image back. So the user sees the images and selects one of the images. So once they select the image, um, so we get collection did select item and index. As before, we get the uh, view model asset for index path. So we call that again and get an asset and put it in the view model selected asset. So that's basically just saving it. Um, and then when that variable is triggered and set, so then we can call the callback that we set earlier in in the profile view drawer. And that's that's basically closing the loop back to the view controller who initiated in the library. Um, so let's see how we get the image out of the asset, which is the last um, interesting piece in this code. Um, so we said, okay, so once we construct a cell, we're gonna put an asset in that cell. So let's go see what happens when we assign an asset. So when we assign an asset, if it's an optional, um, if we do have an asset, we're gonna request an image so from the PH image manager, um, we take the default manager, which is the singleton object, and then we request an image for the specific asset what we got handed. And we tell it we want a size, our size of photo and the content mode, and it gives us a callback with an optional image and some metadata on the image. And once we have that image, if it's, if it's, if it's found in the library, we're going to assign it in our cell. So that's basically how the cell displays the images. And the same logic happens on the profile view controller again. So um, because we're passing back an asset, so you don't have to pass back a whole image. So you pass back an, image, an asset, and then we request an image of a different size here. So remember, these images are all cached, and, and the photo manager, photo image manager, will give you those pretty quickly. And sometimes it might give it, give it to you twice with different resolutions if the photo is um, too large or it needs to process it down to this specific size or fetch it from the network, from the iCloud. So in summary, so always always check for permission, otherwise you won't get any, any results. Um, and then work with PH fetch result if you're using collection views, it's optimized to work with those type of collections and, and table views. Um, and then remember the request image for us, it could be called twice if the image is you know, needs processing, downloading, all sorts of uh, things that take more time. So it's asynchronous. And um, explore and have fun. Thank you.